It's a painting competition for artists who are living or professionally based in the UK. There's no stated age limit on it, but it does tend to attract graduate level and above artists. Historically, it has had different sections to it. There was, in the 60s, a sculpture section but that was phased out and that certainly now we're dealing with works that are in, as the rules state, any painted medium. Some of the works, if you look in detail what's in this exhibition, incorporate things like collage, inks, watercolours, for example. It's a painting competition for artists who are living or professionally based in the UK. There's no stated age limit on it, but it does tend to attract graduate level and above artists. Historically, it has had different sections to it. There was, in the 60s, a sculpture section but that was phased out and that certainly now we're dealing with works that are in, as the rules state, any painted medium. Some of the works, if you look in detail what's in this exhibition, incorporate things like collage, inks, watercolours, for example. During the past week, NPR has been reporting on the growing income gap in America. Economists say one big reason for the widening divide is the steady loss of manufacturing jobs. As more and more U.S. companies move factory jobs overseas, people who lack skills and education have trouble making a decent living. When the carrier air conditioning company shut down its Syracuse, New York plant in 2004, 1,200 jobs were lost. The current financial state of the laid-off workers depends on their skills, age, and degree of determination. During the past week, NPR has been reporting on the growing income gap in America. Economists say one big reason for the widening divide is the steady loss of manufacturing jobs. As more and more U.S. companies move factory jobs overseas, people who lack skills and education have trouble making a decent living. When the carrier air conditioning company shut down its Syracuse, New York plant in 2004, 1,200 jobs were lost. The current financial state of the laid-off workers depends on their skills, age, and degree of determination. For many years, the favorite horror story about abrupt climate change was that a shift in ocean currents could radically cool Europe's climate. These currents, called the overturning circulation, bring warm water and warm temperatures north from the equator to Europe. Susan Lucia, an oceanographer at Duke University, says scientists have long worried that this ocean circulation could be disrupted. For many years, the favorite horror story about abrupt climate change was that a shift in ocean currents could radically cool Europe's climate. These currents, called the overturning circulation, bring warm water and warm temperatures north from the equator to Europe. Susan Lucia, an oceanographer at Duke University, 
says scientists have long worried that this ocean circulation could be disrupted. Lawrence Stephen Lowry was an English artist. Many of his drawings and paintings depict Pendlebury, Lancashire, where he lived and worked for more than 40 years, and also Salford and its surrounding areas. Lowry is famous for painting scenes of life in the industrial districts of northwest England in the mid-20th century. He developed a distinctive style of painting and is best known for his urban landscapes people with human figures often referred to as matchstick men. He painted mysterious and populated landscapes, including portraits and the unpublished marionette works, which were only found after his death. Lawrence Stephen Lowry was an English artist. Many of his drawings and paintings depict Pendlebury, Lancashire, where he lived and worked for more than 40 years, and also Salford and its surrounding areas. Lowry is famous for painting scenes of life in the industrial districts of northwest England in the mid-20th century. He developed a distinctive style of painting and is best known for his urban landscapes people with human figures often referred to as matchstick men. He painted mysterious and populated landscapes, including portraits and the unpublished marionette works, which were only found after his death. Working together, they figured out that if the government was going to propose some kinds of significant tax increases, which is a good strategy, quite me to at least tie something like getting something for those big tax breaks, not seeing any results. So the result of that was in the package of legislation that included the tax increases. There was awesome information to have significant expansion of coverage families where they can buy into their private insurance. Working together, they figured out that if the government was going to propose some kinds of significant tax increases, which is a good strategy, quite me to at least tie something like getting something for those big tax breaks, not seeing any results. So the result of that was in the package of legislation that included the tax increases. There was awesome information to have significant expansion of coverage families where they can buy into their private insurance. If your senior citizen, music in the background may be distracting, but for younger people, experts at multitasking, it's apparently no big deal. That's according to a study in the journal Gerontologist. Researchers recruited 103 people, half between the ages of 18 and 30, the others between 60 and 75. The volunteers then took part in memorization exercises and a drill where they had to quickly match a photo of a face with the same face in an array of unfamiliar faces. Some participants did the exercises in silence. Others performed the tasks while listening to white noise or instrumental jazz, blues, classical and electronic music. Across age groups, the consensus was that the background sound was distracting but only older people's performance suffered when the noise was present. For example, older folks who did the face matching with music playing remembered 10% fewer faces. The result matches up with the theory that the elderly are less able to filter out what's called distracting task-relevant information. In this case, the distracting info might have interfered with them storing the facial image in the first place, much less impeding their ability to remember it a short while later.
If your senior citizen, music in the background may be distracting. But for younger people, experts at multitasking, it's apparently no big deal. That's according to a study in the journal Gerontologist. Researchers recruited 103 people, half between the ages of 18 and 30, the others between 60 and 75. The volunteers then took part in memorization exercises and a drill where they had to quickly match a photo of a face with the same face in an array of unfamiliar faces. Some participants did the exercises in silence. Others performed the tasks while listening to white noise or instrumental jazz, blues, classical and electronic music. Across age groups, the consensus was that the background sound was distracting but only older people's performance suffered when the noise was present. For example, older folks who did the face matching with music playing remembered 10% fewer faces. The result matches up with the theory that the elderly are less able to filter out what's called distracting task-relevant information. In this case, the distracting info might have interfered with them storing the facial image in the first place, much less impeding their ability to remember it a short while later. Fuel cells are the most efficient devices for generating energy, so that combination of low emissions and efficient energy is the real key to the future for lower carbon. I think the fact is that people feel this research is now going somewhere very definite, that the cars that people drive say in 5 or 10 years will be hydrogen or certainly electrical, possibly driven by hydrogen fuel also. Your houses will be much cleaner. They will have renewable fuels again driven by fuel cells and many of the things that we use as gadgets like computers, cameras, they will also have fuel cells. Fuel cells are the most efficient devices for generating energy, so that combination of low emissions and efficient energy is the real key to the future for lower carbon. I think the fact is that people feel this research is now going somewhere very definite, that the cars that people drive say in 5 or 10 years will be hydrogen or certainly electrical, possibly driven by hydrogen fuel also. Your houses will be much cleaner. They will have renewable fuels again driven by fuel cells and many of the things that we use as gadgets like computers, cameras, they will also have fuel cells. Well, of course, the fact that the hands look so similar was intentional. The scriptorium wanted a professional-looking work and they didn't want a lot of individuality in the script. So, the primary objective of the original's writing in this manuscript was to make it look identical. As a matter of fact, because scribes are different people and they have different hand-eye coordination and different habits, they ended up producing something that was slightly different which is not easy to tell to someone who hasn't been staring at the manuscript for a while. Well, of course, the fact that the hands look so similar was intentional. The scriptorium wanted a professional-looking work and they didn't want a lot of individuality in the script. So, the primary objective of the original's writing in this manuscript was to make it look identical. As a matter of fact, because scribes are different people and they have different hand-eye coordination and different habits, they ended up producing something that was slightly different which is not easy to tell to someone who hasn't been staring at the manuscript for a while.
In that month or six weeks, the patient may feel perfectly well. He may even travel around the world spending hours packed into crowded airplanes with unsuspecting fellow passengers. That's bad enough with regular TB or with strains that are resistant to two or three mainline drugs used to treat the disease. But it's a potential public health catastrophe with a new strain called XDR-TB. For extensively drug-resistant tuberculosis, the strain is impervious to a wide array of first- and second-line drugs. That's why 30% or more of its victims die. And that's why people like Lawrence Gostin are rethinking what public health authorities should do about people with suspected XDR-TB in the weeks before the diagnosis is in. In that month or six weeks, the patient may feel perfectly well. He may even travel around the world spending hours packed into crowded airplanes with unsuspecting fellow passengers. That's bad enough with regular TB or with strains that are resistant to two or three mainline drugs used to treat the disease. But it's a potential public health catastrophe with a new strain called XDR-TB. For extensively drug-resistant tuberculosis, the strain is impervious to a wide array of first- and second-line drugs. That's why 30% or more of its victims die. And that's why people like Lawrence Gostin are rethinking what public health authorities should do about people with suspected XDR-TB in the weeks before the diagnosis is in. Now that story's been scotched as only part of contingency planning, but it was a symptom of the dramatic turn of events in South Australia, and it flushed out other remarks from water academics and people like Tim Flannery indicating that things were really much worse than had been foreshadowed even earlier this year. So is Adelaide, let alone some whole regions of South Australia, in serious bother, considering that the vast amount of its drinking water comes from the beleaguered Murray something many of us outside the state may not have quite realized. Is their predicament something we have to face up to as a nation? Now that story's been scotched as only part of contingency planning, but it was a symptom of the dramatic turn of events in South Australia, and it flushed out other remarks from water academics and people like Tim Flannery indicating that things were really much worse than had been foreshadowed even earlier this year. So is Adelaide, let alone some whole regions of South Australia, in serious bother, considering that the vast amount of its drinking water comes from the beleaguered Murray something many of us outside the state may not have quite realized. Is their predicament something we have to face up to as a nation? Certainly I do think that by the end of this decade, the largest social institution in Australia will be single-person households so that the family, mum, dad and the kids is receiving in terms of market share. So less than 28% of households are now mum, dad and the kids, whereas by the end of the decade you'll see that 29% of households are single-person households. Now the issue with single-person households is that people are looking for companionship and as a consequence people living singly will include increasingly pets as their companions. So you could see in Australia in the next decade where the fur family, the pet family, actually becomes the dominant social institution in Australia rather than the human family.
Certainly, I do think that by the end of this decade, the largest social institution in Australia will be single-person households so that the family, mum, dad and the kids is receiving in terms of market share. So less than 28% of households are now mum, dad and the kids, whereas by the end of the decade you'll see that 29% of households are single-person households. Now the issue with single-person households is that people are looking for companionship and as a consequence people living singly will include increasingly pets as their companions. So you could see in Australia in the next decade where the fur family, the pet family, actually becomes the dominant social institution in Australia rather than the human family.